Hello, welcome to my channel and this is Economics Reviewed. Today we want to look the reason as to why inflation is so sticky, why we can't get rid of inflation. Hello, welcome to my channel. This is Economics Reviewed. Today we want to look the concept of inflation, why inflation is so sticky and we can't seem to get rid of it. So what's inflation? Inflation is simply the sustainable rise in prices of goods and services over a sustained period of time. It is a problem that faces each and every country on the globe and especially in the world of today considering the current situations in every single country. Not even one country seems to evade this concept of inflation. So what really causes the problem of inflation and can we really get rid of it? And if yes, how? So welcome to the channel. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so we can be able to learn more. Every single time I release a new video, you'll be the first person to be notified. Inflation is the sustained rise in the prices of goods and services over a sustained period of time in an economy. The concept of inflation simply means that this, the amount of goods and services that one is able to purchase with the same amount of money is now fewer compared to what he or she could purchase before. In when inflation occurs, the average value of a currency reduces, meaning it cannot be able to afford the same amount of goods and services as it was before. So the term inflation is being tracked by certain tools such as price index, that is consumer price index. So consumer price index is a tool used to measure the amount of goods and services that is being consumed by a particular household. So if the amount of goods and services being consumed by a particular household can now not be afforded by the same amount of money that it was used to be purchased for at the previous time, then that one is a sign of inflation. So why does this problem seem to continue and doesn't seem to have any solution? So there are several causes of inflation. The first cause of inflation is called increase in aggregate demand. So when there is a sustained increase in demand for particular goods or service in the economy, at the pace at which the supply in that particular economy cannot be able to move with it, then it is more likely to cause what's called demand pool inflation. So what really causes demand pool inflation? Number one is increase in consumer spending. When people have more income at their disposal, they seem to purchase more goods and services from the economy. So this will increase the demand since they have the amount of money to purchase. But when suppliers are unable to meet this demand, then there is much likely to cause what is called inflation. Number two is increase in government spending. When the government spends a lot of cash or a lot of money in the economy, the amount of money in circulation increases. This means that the consumers and the citizens of the countries will be able to have a lot of income or excessive income at their disposal. So with this income, they will be pushing or demanding more goods and services. And when the suppliers are unable to meet this, then they will be forced maybe to rise prices 
so that they can be able to make more profits or they can be able to reduce the demand. And this is much likely to raise the prices of the goods and services causing inflation. The second cause of inflation is called cost push inflation. So cost push inflation is also a result as is also as a result of increase in demand. So when there is increase in demand, then the suppliers will raise the prices of goods and services because they will be able to now reduce the amount of goods they are supplying so that they can make huge profits. So to increase their profit margin, they will demand that they may be able to hold some goods or services so that when the prices skyrocket they can be able to supply them at much higher prices this will cause inflation in the economy cost push inflation can also be caused by increase in the production of goods and services so when the cost of producing goods and services increases, then the suppliers are much likely to raise the prices of these particular goods so that meet the average amount they need to produce these services or goods. So this will simply raise the prices of those goods causing inflation. Other causes of cost push inflation can also one rise in wages so when there is rise in wages then the employers or the producers will tend to increase the prices of goods and services so that they can be able to cater for the wages of their employees this will simply increase the prices of those particular goods or services they produce causing an inflation in the economy another cause is called contagion or imported inflation so this simply means when there is inflation in a certain country especially on imported goods it is much more likely to get into the economy of a part another country that really trades or really depends on this country for those particular goods or services. So when there is increase in the prices of goods and services in a certain economy, it is much more likely to increase the same prices of those goods and services in other countries that depend on it, which will eventually cause cost push inflation. Another cause of inflation is expectations and behavior. The expectations of consumers or producers or the suppliers are much likely to affect the prices of goods and services. For instance, if suppliers uh, anticipate that a certain good or service will be able to increase in value at a particular period, they are much more likely to hold these goods and services. So when the demand rises, they will be able to sell them. This is called uh, artificial shortage. They can be able to create artificial shortage so that when the demand for these goods and services increase, they can be able to sell them to the consumers. Another expectation is that of the consumers. For instance, if the consumers think that a certain good or service will not be available in the future, they are much more likely to purchase more now so that they can be able to have in store a lot of goods and services so that by the time the shortage increases, they will be able to have them in stock. This is much more likely to raise the prices of those goods and services, causing inflation. Another cause of inflation is monetary factors. For instance, policies or the principles made by central banks are much more likely to affect inflation, are much more likely 
to cause inflation in a country. For example, if the amount of money supply in the economy exceeds the rate at which the economy grows, then it is much more likely to cause inflation. Why? There will be more money in the economy. For consumers pursuing the goods and services, having a lot of money at their disposal, it is much more likely to cause inflation since there will be fewer goods or services to meet this demand. So they are more likely to increase inflation. So interest rates are more likely to be raised or to be reduced depending on the amount of money supply. So easy credit availability can also increase the rate of inflation as a monetary factor. Since many people are able, are able to access the goods or the amount of money they need to purchase the goods at a cheaper price, they are more likely to purchase more, causing the rise in the prices of goods and services, which will eventually lead to inflation. The last cause of inflation is supply shocks. What are supply shocks? Supply shocks are just simply the disruptions in the supply chain of certain goods or services. For instance, the disruption in the supply of a particular good can be caused by wars or instabilities in a country. So increasing these kinds of, of wars or certain instabilities in the globe can be able to cause the rise in the prices of certain goods or services which are much more likely not to be accessed at the required time by the required consumers. So these are the much more likely reasons why we are unable to deal with inflation. And therefore to deal with inflation we need to have proper monetary and fiscal policies in place so we can be able to deal with the problem of inflation around the globe. Thank you for watching the channel. Welcome again next time until we meet again. Thank you.